Hello, I think I've caught uh, a cold and my voice is starting to fade away. So I will record this sermon and then go and drink some uh, tea. So I hope it will be clear enough. So I would like to begin this reflection by telling you a traditional story from the Philippines. I have found in a book called A Hundred Wisdom Stories from Around the World. So here comes the story. A king had two sons. As he grew older, well, he wanted to pass the kingdom to one of them. So he assembled all the wise men and women of the kingdom and called his two sons to present themselves. He gave to each of them five pieces of silver and told them, By evening, I want you to have fill up the whole all. What you fill it up with, it's up to you. Uh, so the older son went off and came to a field where farmers were harvesting sugar beets and putting them to a press, the reminder after pressing was discarded. So the older son looked at this and made an arrangement with the farmers and gave them his five pieces of silver and exchanged the son, the older son, took all the discarded beets and filled the hall with it. Then he told his father that his task was done, there would be no need for his younger brother even to try. But the father replied, there's still time, let's wait, let's see. So the younger brother came and he asked for all the beats to, beats remains to be moved out of the hall. And when the hall was empty once more, he carried a candle into the middle of the hall and lit it. And immediately the whole hall was filled with light. Light streamed into every remote corner. And the king said to his younger son, you shall be my heir. Your brother has spent five pieces of silver to fill the hall with useless rubbish. You have even, haven't use even the single pieces of silver and yet you have filled it with the very thing that my people need about all, light. Well, this morning gospel reading is the continuation of the famous beatitude we find in the gospel according to Matthew. In a very powerful sermon, Jesus imagined a new kind of world in which the most unlikely people are lifted up. The poor in spirit, the meek, the merciful, those who mourn, those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, the pure at heart, and the peacemaker are called blessed. So at the beginning, right after that, at the beginning of today's passage, Jesus bring it on with an uh, image that people are counter, encountering every day. And he says, you are the light of the world. You're like a city built on the top of a mountain that is visible by all. You are this, this light that cannot be diminished or hidden under a bushel, bushel basket. And notice here what Jesus is doing once more. It does not say, well, if you want to be the light of the world, you ought to do this. Or before I call you the light of the world, I need to see this from you. No, no. Jesus simply states, as you are today, my friends, with all your gifts, with all your flaws, you are the light of the world. And this image was not totally new for the crowd who were listening, who was listening to Jesus that day. We can find similar references in the First Testament, for example. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, 
a text that we usually uh, read on Christmas Eve. It says, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. However, in Jesus' time, people were living under, uh, were living oppression. They were living under the rule of the Roman Empire, who considered himself as the light of the world. They were the superpower of the time. And their city, their capital, Rome, was viewed as the shiniest place you can imagine. It was full of culture, art, power. So up to this point, being the light of the world was reserved to the privilege, the powerful, selected elite, maybe a few kings, the mighty emperor, the one who brought peace, the one who brought civilization to the masses, were that light. But this is not what Jesus meant that day. Light is not limited to those who dominate the world. It comes from all of us, every human being. Yes, me and you who are watching are the light of the world. Jesus says that we are all important and all our words, our, all our actions really matter. In fact, we all have this responsibility to let this light shine and it must be visible, it must be attractive as, and, and as a beautiful city can be. Our light has to be a beacon, showing to those around us the core of our values and our beliefs. When people encounter us, they should be able to see it and sense, I don't know, hope, renewal. They should feel the possibilities of a different world in which everyone is a source of blessing. And I like to believe that we all understand this, but too often when it comes times to come, when the time comes to put it in practice, we can be our worst enemies. Because knowingly or not, sometimes we're not always conscious of this. We place this light in a small box. We try to dim it. We're trying to put it under the bush, uh, bushel basket, as the text says, because of fear, or scarcity, or cynicism. Oh, we cannot do this. We don't have the money. We don't have the people. We wonder if we would make a real difference in our society, because we, we have been told that nobody wants to listen to church people in this 21st century. Oh, we have read the articles and the reports saying that we are irrelevant, judgmental, bunch of hypocrites and even arrogant, full of scandals. So the temptation is great to retreat into our churches and to behave as if we were belonging to a social club, a secret society with a secret handshake. We convince ourselves sometimes that we should be content to have the lights on on Sunday morning and have our building heated, and that would be enough. At the end of the day, too often we're the one blocking that light, rather to let it shine wherever we go. The temptation is great, but we cannot fall into this trap because Jesus said we are the light of the world. That's our identity, like it or not, this is who we are. And, and this fact might be frightening for some of us because it feels somehow um, a job description for a position we never applied willingly. It's, it's a lot to carry. But at the same time, it can provide us a sense of reassurance, of clarity, even empowerment. Because being, when we accept that we have this light to share, we can try to stop to apologize for our beliefs. 
or looking for a way to justify our actions. Being the light of the world gave us the permission to simply do what feels right, what we are calling to do, follow the path highlighted by God, and there living in hope of a better world for all. And there's many ways we can embody this call to be this light. As United Church people, we are known for our involvement in our world on the behalf of the vulnerable, like the poor, the sick, and the lonely. We have this long tradition of challenging the status quo for those who are dispossessed, the stranger in their midst, the children who goes to, church, uh, goes to school hungry, the victims of natural disaster, and those who are caught in vicious cycle of addiction. We have understood that each day, each day offers opportunities for justice, for compassion, for mercy toward one another. We can care for a fellow human being regardless of social status, of origin, of ethnicity, of abilities. Most likely the whole world will not notice everything we do all the times. But some will, some might. But most importantly, we will know what we have written, what we have said, what we have shared. We will be aware of the light we have brought to those around us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. With these simple words, he invites his followers to, of all places and all times to stand up, to be courageous, to be involved in our society. And we have this power to make a positive impact. We can face the challenges of our world with hope. We can clear all the rubbish around us and bring what people need the most and desire the most. Being the light of the world can allow us to answer the call God gave us, and we can let this little light of ours as a huge, have the power to make a huge difference in our world. Thanks be to God, and amen.